Hello and welcome to the latest uh, K-Scope podcast. Billy Reeves here. Uh, thanks for your company. Coming up, music from Tesseract, Engineers, The Anchoress and the new album from I Am The Morning. All the way from St. Petersburg in Russia, the follow-up to 2014's Belighted featuring Gavin Harrison of Porcupine Tree and King Crimson, Colin Edwin of Porcupine Tree, Marias Duda of Riverside and Lunatic Soul. The album was mixed by Marcel a Van Limby, of Tory Amos fame. Let's start with this one. Before we hear from Mariana from the band and from Colin Edwin, this is Too Many Years.
and the morning from the album Lighthouse. That's uh, too many years. I spoke to Mariana via Skype uh, recently, me in London, her in St. Petersburg. And I started by asking her how this album was different from the last album. We had this idea of... um a particular tonal plan of the album. It's like, you know, a skeleton of the album that we filled with the material. And we had some of it from, like, last year, but mostly we just composed everything from the scratch within, okay. like, a couple of months. Wow. And, yeah, we, we, we tried not to um, limit ourselves to, like, a s- certain, I don't know musical tools so we used a lot of things that we never used before okay. like for example we never used wind instruments and we used a lot of them this time even even bombard you know this that's a traditional breton instrument uh and it's it's like an ethnic wind stuff and it's 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 very it's very peculiar i wouldn't think that we would ever use anything like that i don't think any i don't think any other band would think of using that apart from you (laughs) (laughs) yeah considering uh specifically thinking that it's like in this very kind of a heavy part of the song with the distorted okay. guitars and drumming <laughs> and then all of a sudden there is a a bombard solo <laughs> yeah. is there um, is there a lyrical theme that ties it together mariana where, where do you where are you coming from words wise um well that is definitely a concept album lyric wise it's it a consist it's like a, a full story and it's a pretty dark one, actually. It's a story of a progression of a mental illness. Okay. Uh, well, the fact that it is dark is not actually surprising, I guess. <laughs> very difficult. Um, a very difficult subject for essentially popular uh, music. Why? I was pretty captivated by works of um, two women, Sylvia Plath and uh, Virginia Woolf. Ah. Both of them ended their lives in a pretty tragical way, mm. um, consciously. I was also um, under a pretty powerful influence uh, from my trip to the UK. I went to, um, I think this place is called Beachy Head. Oh, um, yes, of course, yeah, on, on the south coast. Famous, of course, for people throwing themselves off it. And also, yeah, f- also famous, famous from an, a rock and roll point of view from... Um, uh, throbbing gristle having of their course, album yeah, cover their taken cover. there yeah yeah all oh, right With so you went, yeah yeah well, that's a very melancholy place but very beautiful as well yeah well the fact is that i didn't know anything about the history of this place before i went there but the first idea that i had in my head when i when i just stepped on the cliff and looked down to the mm. sea was how many people chose this place as a place to like go away yeah because there's nothing else you can actually think of when you when you get there, and if if you actually look at the scenery at the on uh, the cover of the album, yeah, it kind of implies that this is this spot at the beachy head, though the lighthouse is supposed to be down down the cliff, but yeah. we decided to place it up. <laughs> So yeah. I, I just send the artist, um, yeah, I send our artist photographs of Seven Sisters Cliffs with the oh, beach ahead. Well, yeah, know it very well. Yeah, so it's it's such a marvelous place. So yeah, so so that essentially, there's a there's a a Russian melancholy and also a Southern England melancholy <laughs> at, to it. That's that's an amazing connection and correlation. But also, of course, there's a couple of English men uh, playing on it as well. How did you? work out how you were going to get Colin Edwin and Gavin Harrison to play on it? Um, Well, Gavin Harrison played on the previous one as well, as you know. Yeah. Uh, So we kind of had a good contact with him already. So he he didn't hesitate a lot when I asked him if he can help us out on this one too. Because it's... uh, it requires a lot of musical feel from actually any any musician on the record. I mean, because uh, we are very geeky when we are approaching um, composing, like arranging stuff. Mm. So, um, and a drummer is like you know this fundamental thing, something that everything 
else is built upon, so drummery is essential. So we were very happy when he agreed to help us. Uh, and Colin, well, it was a funny story because I have a friend in Ukraine who actually plays with him in his other project, uh, Astrata slash Edwin. Okay. And uh, he got me in touch with Colin. Uh, so, and he didn't think a lot. It didn't take him a long time to, to say yes to this too, because we, mm. we send the guys the materials initially. Mm. Uh, Gavin um, should have had a bigger quest because we sent him a very raw demo materials, right. which I personally wouldn't want to listen to. <laughs> right. So I was kind of a bit scared. Because they were like very, very, very... Our music is a very different type of music from what they normally play, I think. Yeah, not uh, So I'm, I'm very happy with the result, actually. I'm, I, I, it, it's an amazing feeling, you know, because they're my favorite musicians from yeah. one of my favorite bands.
featuring Marius Dudar on background vocals there. That's I Am The Morning from the album Lighthouse, and that's the title track. Also, of course, as mentioned, Gavin Harrison, Porcupine Tree, King Crimson's drummer, hits the skins, and Colin Edwin, Porcupine Tree's bass player, is on bass guitars on this album. So also via Skype, me in London and Colin in the northern suburbs of London, I asked him how he got involved with I Am The Morning. Oh, it's a very short story. Um, <laughs> they just emailed me and I said yes. As soon as I heard the, the stuff, they even in the kind of slightly raw state some of it was in, it was obviously had a quality to it, you know. There's a there's a quality and a, and a, a vibe to the whole thing that, that's really really quite special. So I was very happy they asked me. I do a lot of uh, remote sessions, you know. I play on it and and send it back to them, you know. Well, I can, uh, I, can I can understand the advantages of that from your point of view. Obviously, that means you haven't got a lug a bass rig in a Range Rover. <laughs> but what are, what are the problems of that? Because presumably, if you're not sitting with someone face to face and you're playing on their material presumably there's unique problems that you have to get around it, it, i guess the problem comes if you do what they're not expecting and they don't like it <laughs> yeah i <laughs> or, think that's what i'm no, driving at yeah yeah no i mean the, the problems the, the sort of technical problems like if somebody sends you the files or you know with tempo map oh, i'm getting a bit technical now but you know yeah. if somebody sends you the stuff with that's that's in a format that you can put into your computer recording software um, and you don't have any technical problems, then then the problems are, or the issues are all musical issues. Yeah. So musical issues are things like uh, I mean I get I've done quite a lot of stuff remotely, and, and in all honesty, I get sometimes I get a lot of guidance. Yeah. Uh, you know, some people send me a guide bass part and say, "Can you do something in this style or like this?" And other times I get absolutely nothing. I just get sent a song with no bass. Wow. Uh, and with the Eye in the Morning, it was a mixture of the two. There was a few tracks where they had a guide uh, bass part, and, and in most cases it was kind of obvious to me what the bass should do. Yeah. And a couple of tunes, there was very little, well, there was nothing uh, in the way of bass. Um, so I was kind of free to, to do what yeah. I wanted, and, and I'm very happy to say, or very happy to find out, you know, that they... They liked pretty much everything yeah. I did first time round. But I mean, which do you prefer? Well, it's not just about the part. I mean, you're bringing it to life, aren't you? you yeah. You, you know, I, I could get given a... What might be on the track might be something played on a MIDI keyboard, and it doesn't sound very interesting. Ah, uh-huh, yeah. Um, it's got no dynamics, it's got no feel. It's If someone... You know, the right thing to play is the right thing to play. So if, if they've uh, got something that works really well, then I'm, I'm quite happy just to play the bass. But yeah. it's an interesting role, because you're in between everything... Yeah. But you're fundamentally quite important. So one of the benefits of doing a remote session is I've got a great, fantastic collection of bass guitars. So um, rather than just take one or two to a studio, you know, I've got uh-huh, 10, yeah. 10, 12 instruments here I can choose and I can, you know, I can fiddle about as I want to. I think there was one track where I, I, I kind of overdid it a bit and gave them loads of ideas. Right. <laughs> well, so, well, again, sometimes fun. better to give them too many than too little, I guess. Well, that's the fun of it for me, you know. Yeah. Um, what often happens when you go around the houses, you end up back where you started, and that means your judgment was right first time, you know, yeah. so that's good. That makes sense. So what are you up to then, Colin? What, what, are, the, what are your plans for 2016? I've just finished a gig with Twinscapes, which is a, a dual bass duo that I have with an Italian mm-hmm. guy from Italy called Lorenzo Feliciati. So we just played a festival. Uh, next week I'm going to play with Metallic Taste of Blood, um, which is um, the first time we've played live as a, as a, as a trio, with, uh, Ted Parsons on drums. Um, and then I've been playing with a, a project called Orc, which is myself and another guy, a couple of guys from Italy, okay. uh, Pat Mastolotto on drums. Mm-hmm. And um, today I've booked a flight to South America, so we're mm-hmm. going to uh, do some gigs in South America in June. Crikey. So, uh, and then uh, I'm also working on an album with a band called Obarque, which is another project I have um, with a, <laughs> yet more people from Italy. Right. And um, I'm actually uh, in the process of writing some lyrics, which is something I don't do very often, mm. but I kind of enjoy it when I do it. So. Right, okay. Final question then. What is happening with Porcupine Tree? Uh, well, we haven't discussed ending it and we haven't discussed starting it so there's nothing going on and there's nothing not going on 
<laughs> brilliant politician's answer. Thanks very much, Colin. That's brilliant. I can barely feel what I feel. White light on my skin, my journey begins with dissolve. from the album Lighthouse, that's entitled Belighted. The astonishingly talented Gleb and Mariana from St. Petersburg. A classic in the making, a towering achievement on every level. Not my words, the words of Echoes and uh, Dust. Uh, Prog Mind gave this LP 10 out of 10, lavish abundantly inspired and desperately good in every respect, made for those who crave expression, beauty and emotional power. Kscopemusic.com slash I am the morning. My thanks to Colin and Mariana and also thanks to Gleb for a terrific album. Out now. Right then, the Anchoress releases an exclusive seven-inch single for 2016's Record Store Day. The Anchoress, also known as Catherine A.D., offers up a special limited edition uh, vinyl release for Record Store Day, which is on the 16th of April this year. The Anchoress, popular.
children of the children of the Russian czars And all the parents will smile at her and say, you know, she's gonna go Scope album Confessions of a Romance Novelist. That's the Anne Caress, and that's called Popular. Her special limited seven inch vinyl release for Record Store Day. Uh, the B side of that is a brand new string version of the single What Goes Around. You can search for your local Record Store Day a participating dealer at recordstoreday.co.uk. UK. Uh, the album uh, got four out of five in Mojo, nine out of ten in the line of best fits. Well worth checking out. And Catherine takes the anchoress on a little mini tour. Some live dates coming up at the back end of the spring. May the 13th, Focus Wales in Wrexham, a headline set. May the 20th, as she plays the Great Escape Festival down in Brighton on the south coast in England, headlining the BBC Introducing Stage. May the 29th, Liverpool Sound City on the main stage. And June the 15th, I'll see you at the beautiful Bush Hall in West London. Kscopemusic.com forward slash The Anchoress. Now, on The Anchoress's album, playing and co-producing, co-writing some of it, is the mighty Paul Draper, the man who fronted Manson in the late 90s and the early part of this century. And Paul Draper has now signed to K-Scope. This will see Draper releases massively anticipated first new recording since the breakup of Manson some 13 years ago. As you know, I'm an enormous uh, Paul Draper and Manson fan, so I popped round to his house to ask him how he got involved with K-Scope and he invited me into his kitchen for a cup of tea. I started by asking Paul what he's been up to for the last 13 years. Production work. Uh, I'm running my studio, which was my passion, in a big complex where we had all other people working mm. in music. So we rented it mm. out to Frank Ocean, Pixie mm. Lot, Savages, a really great, famous old Motown writer called Leon Ware. Mm. Um, lots of people were coming into my studio, so it was a, it was a real hub of activity. Mm. 
and I had a few other projects on the go in there, but never really looking at any solo stuff of mine. And so I decided to get stuck into the Anchor S project, and that was a couple of years after we'd had my studio at Stanley House in Acton. Hmm. I knew K-Scope because I had a email through from Johnny Wilkes, right. and he said, oh, there you are, we've been trying <laughs> to find you for years. Right. And he said, um, can I come and meet you? And I was like, yeah, sure. And he came over and he said, look, we've set up this label, it's a post-progressive label it's um, and he talked to me about some of the albums he'd had out on it and they'd released an album that I really loved by the Engineers the last Engineers album and I was like oh right that's what you guys do so I really understood what the label was it was uh, I mean sure they get things in the charts and they sell a lot of records but it was it was seemed like a home for real musicians Mm. and they were like you know we drew up a list of people we'd like to find and who we could make an album with someone who had one foot in our world and mm. you know one foot in other worlds and you were near the top or at the top yeah. and we'd be looking for you I said oh okay <laughs> so I went along and saw their um, offices mm. and um, understood what their record label was all about and got to know them and mm. we hung out a bit and then um, we, we put out the first single by the Anchoress on mm. Two Pure Records, which is part yeah. of Beggar's Banquet. And to be honest, after that, and after doing a few interviews on behalf of Catherine, um, I had quite a few labels contact me. Okay. Um, some from Universal, Sony, a few smaller ones. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, you know, I think for someone like me who'd been in a band like Manson many years ago, and then over the years Manson's become sort of a respected band off the yeah, first fair point. two albums, and um, I think there's a strong fan base there, and a, mm. a certain type of record label, not a record label that's going to develop new young talent from the brick school, but certain record labels would certainly be interested in me, and I spoke to them all, and loads had good points. I came back mm. to Casco and I just thought this suits me but finally then are you going to be able to perform it live are there plans in your head to take it out and promote it live yes I mean we've had streams of offers come in you know right. we, I yes I'll def- definitely be out live Great. how why and when I don't know mm. I think when we get it right and we get the album all packaged and all ready for everyone to see I think we're just going to put it out and okay. if it goes well then we're going to announce some shows uh, probably half a dozen around the country where we'll perform the album and we'll see how it goes yeah delighted that Paul Draper has joined the K-Scope family not long ago of course he was in a band that were number one in the UK charts Manson's Attack of the Grey Lantern album entered the UK chart at number one look forward to hearing EP1 in June we'll have a Further interview with Paul around that time. Now, vote Tesseract in Metal Hammer's Golden Gods Award. They're up for 2016's Best UK Band. Go to 2016.goldengods.teamrock.com and vote uh, Tesseract. Let's hear Utopia, shall we, from the most recent Tesseract album. And you can hear the concept for this track from Dan on K-Scope's YouTube channel then. From Polaris. Tesseract Utopia Broken mirror on the wall You give no reflection of me at all Your wicked ways I won't understand Intoxicating we command Rusting scissors in the door Pull me closer to life no more Why am I so confused? I'm impressed
Tesseract from Polaris. That's entitled Utopia. A reminder of some of your K-Scope bands and artists that are out on tour at the moment. As mentioned, the Anchoress does some shows in May and June. The Receiver continue their mammoth tour of the United States. The Receiver Music dot com forward slash shows. Ian Anderson takes out a show entitled Jethro Tull's The Rock Opera, uh, those concerts throughout America for much of the year. The weekend of the 1st and the 2nd of July in Barcelona at B Prog, my friend, you can see the pineapple thief Stephen Wilson and our friends Opeth. Now, as mentioned earlier on by Paul Draper of Manson and one of his favourite bands, Engineers, currently being used on a TV commercial, Bowers and Wilkins Speakers Volvo Cars advert from the album In Praise of More. I'm going to finish with this, casecoatmusic.com forward slash engineers to find out more about the band. This is entitled What It's Worth. See ya. Oh,